the lovely technical interviews. Everybody's favorite part about becoming a software engineer, landing a job in big tech, and something that everybody looks forward to, you know, spending four or five months grinding leak code just to fail every interview that you get given. I, of course, am joking. I hate technical interviews as much as everyone else. I actually worked for a company called Algo Expert, where I spent months preparing technical interview questions and teaching people how to pass them. And I currently work with Kevin, my business partner inside of DevLaunch, where he has conducted hundreds of technical interviews, and we talk about them all the time. I myself have passed technical interviews at Microsoft, Google, and Shopify, and I've given many in my career. Now, I don't say that to brag, but simply to tell you I'm very familiar with these interviews, and if I hate them, you probably hate them too, because they really are not a fair evaluation of developers' skills. That said, they exist. If you want a 200K plus per year job, you're probably going to have to pass one, especially if you want to work at a big tech company, so you might as well play the game, figure it out, hate your life for a few months and get a really great job, right? One paying a massive amount of money that will set you up for the rest of your career. So that's what I wanna talk about in this video. How can you pass these interviews and what are the common mistakes that you are probably making when you go into them? Again, keep in mind that we can hate these interviews as much as we want. We simply need to play the game, get into the job, and then we can do real development work. Again, I know it sucks, but I just focus on reality on this channel and the things that actually make a difference because complaining doesn't help us. Okay, so I'm gonna go into these tips. Quick reminder, if you want personalized one-on-one -on -one assistance with passing technical coding interviews, especially if you're already an experienced software engineer, we do that inside of DevLaunch. We give you mock interviews, we give you in-depth resources and guides, and we help people go from failing every interview that they've had to landing literally the next position that they get an interview for simply because they are prepared. Most of you already have the skills, you simply do not know how to prepare for the interviews, which is the thing holding you back. Anyways, let's get into these five mistakes. So the first mistake, which is extremely common, is to jump immediately into the solution. Now I'm sure that you're probably familiar with technical interviews, you may have been given them before, but typically the um, interviewer is gonna ask you a fairly vague question. Reverse a linked list. Find the largest value in an array, right? And people just immediately think, okay, I'm really smart, I gotta jump in and you know solve the problem right away, and they immediately start writing code. That is the biggest mistake you can possibly make. And if you do that, you will almost immediately fail the interview before it's even started. The reason for that is these technical interviews are designed to test not only your coding ability, but actually more so your problem solving ability. The interviewer wants to see how you communicate, how you break down the problem, and they actually want to ensure that you stop and think about it before you jump in and start solving a problem. Right? Think about it, a big tech company, if you just started writing code immediately, that is not a good sign. They want you to actually design the solution and debate the different alternatives. So do not jump right into the code editor. Start by breaking down the problem, understanding what the problem is, asking clarifying questions. For example, can I expect really large inputs? Is there gonna be negative values here? Could I get an empty list? Is this what you meant? I just wanna make sure I understand the problem before I go forward, right? This is a very common approach. This is what you have to do. You have to clarify the problem, make sure that you have all of the requirements and everything's narrowed down. And then you wanna start coming up with a plan and designing your solution before you jump into the code. You should actually spend almost half your time in the interview in this planning phase where you're coming up with your solution, verifying that it works, and then you go and solve it. Okay, so next time you're in an interview and they ask you something, even if you already know the answer, stop, pause, and plan. That's gonna be my new motto actually. Stop, pause, plan. I think that's pretty easy to remember. Make sure you do that. Now the next critical mistake that almost everybody makes in these interviews is not streaming their thought process. Now in these interviews, it's really like a performance. I know it sounds crazy, but you have to kind of act. You have to speak, you have to present yourself and you have to really sell yourself beyond simply the solution and the code that you come up with. So it's extremely important that you're pretty much talking the entire interview. There shouldn't be these large gaps of silence where you're not saying anything, or the interviewer isn't sure what you're doing. You as the candidate needs to kind of lead the interview in terms of the way in which you're communicating and what you're about to do. For example, if you watch any of my YouTube videos where I actually explain to you code, right, or I break down a problem, you'll see exactly how that's done. You as the viewer, you're trying to follow along with my code and my thought process. So I need to stream that thought process to you. For example, okay, so I'm just looking at the problem here. This is, I, I clarified it, right? So I have all of the requirements. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start coming up with a bit of a plan. Okay, so I think for this, I'm gonna need to plan it by, first of all, I need to check the array, make sure that it's empty. 
you get the idea, right? I'm just giving you a random example. The point is everything that you do or think about, you need to share that with the interviewer. Now, if you do get to a part where you do genuinely need silence to actually come up with a solution or think, you have to say that. So, hey, I'm just going to take a second here. I just want to really break this down. I'll be back in, you know, 30 seconds a minute. I just want to, uh, you know, take some silence and, and really think about this deeply. Totally fine. At least the interviewer knows what you're doing. But if you just sit there and you don't say anything, they have no idea what you're doing. They can't follow your thought process and they're going to assume the worst, which is that you're lost. So no matter what you do, talk about it, say what you're about to do. If you need to take a break, that's fine. But you have to kind of present that first so the interviewer can follow along with what you're doing. Again, the more you talk, the better. And if you watch someone like me who has at this point 1700 YouTube videos, you'll see that this is not an easy skill and it's something you need to practice while you're preparing for these interviews. You literally need to go do a leak code question and while you're doing the leak code question, talk nonstop through your code. Again, not easy to do, but something that will dramatically help you because most candidates fail in this component. Now the next major mistake, which is far too common, is not evaluating your solution. Now, when we talk about these data structures and algorithms types problems, a major component of this is space and time complexity. This means understanding how efficient your solution is and how good your solution is objectively compared to other alternatives. This is one of the main things that you're being evaluated on. How good is your decision making? How good is your problem solving? Do you know why this solution is way better than this solution? And can you make those decisions if you were in a workplace environment? In programming, there are hundreds of ways to solve the same problems. Some are objectively much better than others. So when you're solving these types of problems, you need to put that at the forefront of your brain. You need to evaluate the different ways you could go about solving this problem, analyze them and talk about why you made the decision you did. Now, the common way to make sure you don't get this wrong is to always present the brute force solution first before you move into the more optimal solution. So for example, let's say I ask you to sort an array. You can brute force this sort by using something like bubble sort or insertion sort, right? Where you're doing an n squared time complexity algorithm. This is not the most efficient way to solve it, but it is one way. And it's a solution that even though you're not going to write, you need to present to the interviewer. So you would say, hey, this is the first solution that comes to mind. It's a brute force approach where I'm going to have two for loops. I'm going to loop through and I'm going to compare every element to every other element. I know that's gonna solve it, but that's gonna be an n squared time complexity algorithm. So I'm gonna hold off on that for right now and see if I can come up with a more optimal solution that uses less time. Okay, so my new solution is I'm actually gonna go with something like merge sort, because I know that's an n log n time complexity operation, which is significantly faster and is gonna be more efficient. Boom, there you go, right? I just presented two alternatives and then I talked about which one is better and why I'm gonna go with it. Now, even if you don't do that, when you get to the end of your solution, you need to make sure that you explain the advantages of your solution, why you went with it, and any potential drawbacks. You don't always need to implement the best solution possible. In fact, sometimes the interviewer is testing you to see if you're actually going to compromise and get something done in time, because sometimes the optimal solution is not feasible to write. So in that situation, you write something, let's say middle of the pack, right? Maybe you do an n time complexity algorithm when there's a log n time complexity. You explain to the interviewer at the end, this is the time complexity of my algorithm because boom, boom, boom. You do the analysis, you explain why it's whatever the time complexity and space complexity is. Then you say, I know this isn't the best possible solution because of these reasons. I could likely improve it by using a heap, for example, rather than using an array. However, I went with this because this is what was feasible for me to solve in the amount of time allocated. Boom, there you go. Like that's what they're looking for. And that's what you need to make sure you do. Evaluate your solution, compare it against others and justify your reasoning. Doesn't always have to be correct, but you need to at least do that, right? Go through that process. Now, the next mistake is a massive pet peeve of mine. It's personally something that I almost instantly eliminate people for because it really shows the lack of practice and the lack of passion in this industry. Now that is simply not being fluent at writing code. Look, if you tell me that you're a senior Java developer and we get in the code editor or we go on the whiteboard and you start writing Java code and you don't know what a for loop is or you can't remember the syntax to an if statement, yes, this has happened many times to me actually, I'm immediately just gonna assume that you're lying to me. I've written you know, millions of lines of code. If you ask me to write Python code, I don't need to look up the syntax, I don't need autocomplete, I don't need cursor to generate it, I know how to write it because I actually write Python code. So if you get into a coding interview and situation and you don't know basic syntax, that's an immediate red flag. And while it's not something that's probably even going to be on your scorecard in terms of how they evaluate you, it is going to be something that's definitely in the back of the interviewer's mind. Like, 
how does this guy not know what like a slice in Python is? He doesn't know like the print statement syntax. Has he not used like input? Does he not know what like, you know, a set is or an array? You get the idea, right? So you need to be fluent with your basics in the language. Now it doesn't need to mean you need to be perfect. You can make a syntax error here and there, especially if you're writing it, you know, on a whiteboard, you don't have any autocomplete, nothing that that's fine. But you need to generally kind of know or look like you know what you're talking about. And that means that when you're practicing, practicing without AI, practicing without autocomplete, writing code by hand from scratch on a whiteboard, that's the best way to get good at this. And personally, before I went in for my Microsoft interviews, I spent two weeks doing uh, whiteboarding where I would answer every leak code question on the whiteboard. Then I would type it out, see if it compiled and kind of fixed any of my errors. Again, you don't need to be perfect. You don't need to know all of the advanced syntax, but basic things like if statements, for loops, variables, types, etc. you've got to know that. Otherwise, that's a huge red flag. Now, the last major mistake is not using a system or following a framework. Now, it is already very difficult, just objectively speaking, to answer these types of problems. There is a reason why senior engineers fail technical interviews. It's not because they're not a senior engineer. It's simply because they didn't study enough. Now, if you go into this interview and you don't have a framework or a system that you're going to use to answer this type of problem, you very likely just will fail, even if you are extremely smart. So what am I talking about here? Well, there is a very commonly followed, and this is not just, you know, from me, like everyone talks about this kind of eight to 10 step process, depending on who you ask, that you need to follow when you go into a tech interview. I have a video breaking it down extremely in depth. You can check it out here. And if you join a program like DevLaunch, we nail this into your brain through every mock interview that we do. So you literally cannot not do this when you get into an interview. Now, just to quickly give you the gist of it, you know, you clarify the problem. You look at the different edge cases that could occur. You come up with a basic plan. You start writing the code. You evaluate the code for its performance. You compare it to different solutions. I'm not giving you the exact process in the complete right order because I'm doing it off the top of my head. But the point is, this is something that you can memorize and that you can just follow when you go into the interview. You know, okay, no matter what question I get asked, even if I don't fully understand it, this is the first thing that I do. Okay, once I do that, this is the second step. This is the third step. This is the fourth step. And having that framework allows you to root your interview go through a consistent process and shows that you know what you're doing, right? It's just like when you write certain code, okay, I'm gonna start by setting up my app, I'm gonna start by adding authentication, then I'm gonna connect to the database, then I'm X, Y, Z, whatever, right? Like kind of a consistent process. Same thing when you go into the tech interview, if you have this, even if you fail the problem, you will make progress because you'll at least have progressed through what you should be doing. And this is the number one thing we see with DevLaunch students. When they learn this framework and they start practicing it, they immediately have better results. And this was spoken exactly by one of our students, Eric, who said simply him having mastered that framework allowed him to pass so many more interviews because he wasn't stuck on what he needed to do. He just went back to the framework, followed the steps, and even if he wasn't perfect, he was able to make progress. Now look, there are lots more of mistakes and traps that you can fall into in the technical interview, but these are the most common. The truth is you need to practice, but you need to practice smart, right? Just blindly doing leak code questions isn't going to allow you to pass these. You need to do mock interviews. You need to simulate this situation and you need to do as best as you possibly can to effectively practice like you're going to play. This is always what I say, right? If you know you're gonna be writing code on a whiteboard, practice writing code on a whiteboard. If you know that you're gonna be in a code editor and you're not gonna have any AI, don't use AI in your practice. Now, if you want hands-on, one-on-one support for these types of problems and you already are a software engineer, you've either had a job before or you have all of the basics down, that's really the only people that we work with, consider joining DevLaunch. I will leave a link in the description. You can book a call with my team. We're very straightforward. We'll make sure that you're a good fit. If you are, you can join the program and I guarantee that you will get more comfortable with this because we'll essentially force you to. If you enjoyed this video and you like my blunt to the point advice, then leave a like, drop a comment, let me know what you think about it, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.